Hi, welcome to the first part of This Week in Tudor History for the week beginning the 15th of February. And today I'm going to be telling you about the last monk to become Archbishop of Canterbury, the man who wrote one of the most important documents of the Protestant Reformation, and an earl who wept when he had to imprison Princess Elizabeth, the future Queen Elizabeth I. So let's start with the 15th of February. On the 15th of February, 1503, which was in the reign of King Henry VII, Administrator and Archbishop of Canterbury, Henry Dean, died at Lambeth Palace at around the age of 63. He was laid to rest at Canterbury Cathedral in a lavish funeral. Let me give you a few facts about this Archbishop, and you may never have heard of him. Well, we do not know Henry Dean's birth date or the names of his parents, but it's thought that he was born in around 1440 in the Forest of Dean, part of Gloucestershire. The first mention of Dean in the records is in 1457, when he became Canon of Clantony in Gloucestershire. He was educated at Clantony, an Augustinian priory, and then at Oxford, probably at Exeter College, where he's known to have rented rooms. He became prior of Clantony in 1467 and kept that office until 1501. Ten years later, in 1477, in the reign of King Edward IV, he was serving as a royal chaplain. In 1481, he was able to join the Priory of Clantony Prima in Monmouthshire to his own priory, paying the king 300 marks to do so. He also instituted a programme of building works at his priory. He even added his own arms to the gatehouse, which 19th century antiquary Walter Farquhar Hook describes as a chevron between three birds, which Hook states are like Danish ravens. In 1485, King Henry VII came to the throne and Dean was able to continue in royal favour, being awarded with grants for his priory. Hook believes that Dean owed much to John Morton, Archbishop of Canterbury, and Robert Morton, Bishop of Worcester, for his rise. In 1489, Dean was admitted to Lincoln's Inn, one of London's inns of the court, and he became a royal councillor. Then in 1494, Chancellor of Ireland, serving Prince Henry, who was Lord Lieutenant, but really only in an honorary role. So Dean was really serving under the Lord Deputy of Ireland, Sir Edward Poynings. Dean was promoted to the position of Deputy Governor and Justiciar of Ireland in 1496 after Poynings had returned to England, but he himself left Ireland in that August. In 1494, he was made Bishop of Bangor, accomplishing wonders, according to Hook, in a bishopric which had been left in a deplorable state. He set about restoring the cathedral and rebuilding the palace. In December 1499, Henry VII chose Dean as Bishop of Salisbury. And by this time, Hook writes that Dean had recovered nearly all lost rights and property of the See of Bangor. He was concerned about leaving Bangor and made sure that the building work would continue there before he left for Salisbury. In 1500, Dean was made Registrar of the Order of the Garter. And in October 1500, Dean was made Keeper of the Great Seal, following the death of John Morton, Archbishop of Canterbury, and following the death of Thomas Langton, Morton's successor as Archbishop of Canterbury, in January 1501, Dean became Archbishop of Canterbury. Historian Harper Bill writes that he was the first religious to be elevated to Canterbury for 135 years, and he was, of course, the last. Religious in that sense, meaning a monk. In November 1501, Dean officiated at the wedding of Arthur, Prince of Wales, and Catherine of Aragon, being assisted by no less than 19 bishops. Then he was chief commissioner for the Treaty of Perpetual Peace of 1502 between King Henry VII and his Scottish counterpart, King James IV, whose terms included the marriage of Henry's eldest daughter, Margaret, to the Scottish king. 
In July 1502, a sickly dean resigned the Great Seal. He died at the Archbishop's Palace at Lambeth on the 15th of February 1503. Hook describes what happened next to the Archbishop's remains. A barge with funeral trappings was moored at the steps of Lambeth Manor House. 33 sailors arrayed in black and each bearing a lighted candle received the coffin and watched the corpse during its progress down the Thames until they arrived at Fathersham. At Faversham, a funeral car had been provided. On it was laid the coffin, surmounted by an effigy of the Archbishop, sumptuously arrayed in his pontificals. Fifty torches blazed around the dead man, thus lying as it were in state, and sixty gentlemen followed on horseback. On the feast of St Matthias the Apostle, the 24th of February, the interment took place in Canterbury Cathedral, according to the injunctions of the defunct in the martyrdom near the grave of Archbishop Stafford. A marble stone with a monumental brass marked his grave, although these are now lost. Unfortunately, although Dean had planned for masses to be said for his soul for 20 years and had left plenty of money for this and his funeral, his executors were neglectful in their duties and it's said that masses were only said for a few weeks. Sad. Moving on to the 16th of February. On the 16th of February, 1497, which in England was in the reign of King Henry VII, German humanist, reformer and scholar Philip Melanchthon was born at Breton in Germany. Here are just a few facts about this famous reformer. His father, Georg Schwarzert, was armourer to Philip the Upright, Count Palatine of the Rhine. Melanchthon was born with the surname Schwarzert, meaning black earth, but changed it to the Greek equivalent Melanchthon, a suggestion of his humanist great uncle, Johann Rutlin. He studied philosophy, rhetoric, astronomy, astrology, Greek, law, mathematics, medicine, and theology. His first published works were not theological works, they were poems, followed by Greek grammar. He became a professor of Greek at Wittenberg University at the age of 21. In 1520, he married the mayor of Wittenberg's daughter, Catherine Krapp, and they went on to have four children. Melanchthon was a friend and colleague of Martin Luther, defending Luther's views in a 1521 work. Melanchthon worked hard, beginning his day at 2 a.m. and starting lectures for his students at 6 a.m., Bet they were impressed. Melanchthon's works included his 1521 Loci Communes, which the Encyclopaedia Britannica describes as the first systematic treatment of the new Wittenberg theology developed by Luther, and which Queen Elizabeth I was said to have memorised so that she could have theological discussions. Melanchthon also had a major influence on education in Germany through an educational plan he published. He also founded several universities and reformed others. He became known as Preceptor of Germany. In 1530, the Augsburg Confession, a confession of the faith of the Lutheran Church, was put before the Diet of Augsburg. It had been prepared by Melanchthon and is known as one of the most important documents of the Protestant Reformation. Melanchthon believed in justification by faith, and scriptural authority, and his beliefs regarding the Eucharist were more Calvinist, that is to say that the body and blood of Christ are not present in the bread and wine. He believed that God offered the gift of salvation, but that a person must accept or reject it. God draws, but he draws him who is willing, he said. He believed in good works as an expression of faith. At the beginning of April 1560, Melanchthon came down with a cold and then a fever which gradually weakened him. His 19th century biographer, James William Richard, writes that as his end drew near, his son-in-law, Dr. Pusser, asked him if he needed anything, and Melanchthon answered, nothing else but heaven. 
Melanchthon died on the evening of the 19th of April, 1560. Richard writes that the inscription in Latin on his coffin recounted the chief events of his life as that he'd served the University of Wittenberg for 42 years, was the faithful assistant of Luther in the purification of doctrine, was the author of the Augsburg Confession and the firm defender of divine truth publicly and privately in diets and by his writings. He was laid to rest beside Martin Luther at Wittenberg in All Saints Church. If you want to read more about him, James William Richard's 19th century biography is available to read online. So I'll give you a link to that on archive.org. You'll find the link in the description. Now we're heading on to the 17th of February. On the 17th of February, 1557, so in the reign of Queen Mary I, Henry Radcliffe, second Earl of Sussex, died at Cannon Row in Westminster. He was buried firstly at St. Lawrence Pountney and then moved to Boreham in Essex. Sussex, who was about 50 at his death, was the son of courtier and soldier Robert Radcliffe, first Earl of Sussex. He accompanied the King and Anne Boleyn on their 1532 Calais visit and was made a Knight of the Bath in the celebrations for Anne Boleyn's coronation in 1533. He commanded men under the Duke of Norfolk in Henry VIII's French campaign in 1544 and was Lord Sewer at Edward VI's coronation in 1547. He served as Joint Lieutenant of Norfolk in 1551, 52 and 53. In the succession crisis of July 1553, Sussex supported Mary I and she made him her commander-in-chief. He went on to serve her as a privy councillor and on the commission which tried Lady Jane Grey. In 1554, he was elected as a Knight of the Garter, and in 1555, he served as Lord Lieutenant of Norfolk and Suffolk. Although he was loyal to Mary, he did not support her marriage to Philip of Spain, and he did not support the arrest of Elizabeth in 1554 weeping as he escorted her into the Tower of London and saying to his colleagues, what will you do, my lords? And she was a king's daughter and is the queen's sister and ye have no sufficient commission so to do. Sussex married twice, firstly to Elizabeth Howard, daughter of Thomas Howard, second Duke of Norfolk, with whom he had three sons, Thomas, Henry and Robert, Following Elizabeth's death in 1534, he married Anne Calthorpe, daughter of Sir Philip Calthorpe, with whom he had three children, Egremont, Maud and Francis. This second marriage was not happy because Sussex was a religious conservative, while his wife was one of a circle around Queen Catherine Parr, who had shared reformed religious views. Anne was imprisoned in the Tower in 1552 for alleged sorcery, and in 1553, following the accession of Mary I, she fled into exile and Sussex divorced her. When Sussex died in 1557, his eldest son Thomas became third Earl of Sussex. That's it for today. In the second part of this week in Tudor history, I'll be talking about a French duke whose death was a factor in a horrible massacre, an imprisoned noblewoman finding out about the death of her son, a countess who served all six of Henry VIII's wives and who was close to his daughter Mary, and a noblewoman who had two babies while imprisoned in the Tower of London. Please do subscribe by clicking round about there and hit the bell to be notified so that you don't miss that video and, of course, other videos that I post. I'll see you very soon. Please do give me a like and leave a comment, but you'll see me very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.